Hallelujah. On the brink of a new year. Uh, and I just want to share a word with you um, that I believe will bring about and facilitate encouragement for the year to come. That if we would take this very familiar passage of Scripture to heart, and I know it's familiar to all you Bible readers. You ain't even got to be a Bible reader. You're going to know this particular passage of scripture but if you take it to heart and allow it to sink deep within I promise you that it will be a blessing to you along life's way Psalm 23 I want you to check out what it says and read it over and over again in your daily devotion and your time of meditation and time of prayer. Check out what it says. It says, and I'm going to be reading from the NIV translation of this 11th century Masoretic text. I believe they got, there it is. I'll read it from the NIV and the King James. I know you're familiar with that. Check out the NIV. Listen to what it says. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. <laughs> I like that already. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul and he guides me along the paths, uh, the right paths for his name's sake. Even though, even though, even though uh, I walk through the, the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they... Bring me comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One more time from the King James translation of this 11th century Masoretic text. Check out what it says. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. That's what I want you to underline. I want you to highlight that. He says, I shall not want. Look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, I shall not want. Pick out another neighbor and say, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, personalizing it. I shall not want. That's what I want to talk about. On tonight, you may be seated in the presence of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord, and certainly our soon coming King. Uh, disorientation can be defined as an alteration of one's mental focus or mental status. Let me say that again disorientation. It is defined as an alteration, if we'll of one's mental focus or mental state of mind, that mental status. Orientation, however, on the other hand, uh, is one's uh, personal knowledge and insight concerning uh, identity and uh, locality and time and place and date. It is one being well informed of his or her surroundings, his or her uh, whereabouts, if will. When you look up orientation and disorientation, uh, medical health professionals list no less than 16, there are more, but no less than 16 causes as to why people uh, can or may become disoriented. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere. Uh, they listed things like uh, insomnia, can't sleep, uh, that can disorient a person. Anxiety, worried and stress uh, can disorient a person. They go on to list things like delirium and uh, uh, dementia and drug abuse and alcohol consumption. And the list goes on and on. 
these things, y'all, these things can actually affect one's ability, if will, to focus, causing them to become disoriented. Now, if you uh, were to ask the person next to you or behind you or in front of you, if you were to ask someone round about you to give you some reasons why he or she may experience new now, spiritual disorientation, I could probably take the answers that they give and um, put it all together and sum it up uh, in one dimensional uh, description. Yeah, yeah, I could do that in one uh, dimensional uh, description. Uh, Troubles Y'all, from the past, uncertainty of the future, and the struggle or inability to focus on the Lord causes one, if will, Dr. Phillips, to experience spiritual disorientation. I think I need to say that again, Dr. Moss. Here it is. You can ask somebody beside you, behind you, in front of you, what would cause them to experience spiritual disorientation, and they would tell you uh, troubles from the past, uncertainty of the future, and the struggle or the inability to focus on the Lord sends us into a whirlwind of spiritual disorientation. So then, uh, the question becomes, how do we get refocused. Yeah, how do we uh, reorient, uh, that is, regain a sense of balance and a sense of direction and a sense, if will, of priority? Uh, Perhaps, y'all, a dimensional exploration against the backdrop of life and living will provide a suitable answer. What I mean to say is that just maybe the answer lies in looking back, looking forward, and looking up. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking to the past and to the future with an upward point of view. Did y'all catch what I just said? Yeah, looking back at the past and into the future with an upward point of view. Y'all, I like that because that's what we see here in this 23rd Psalm. Yeah, that's just what David does as he utters the words, I shall not want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Donna, that's what he does. Uh, y'all, he looks to the past and into the future from an upward point of view, and he looks back and he declares, the Lord is my shepherd. I like that. In that one sentence alone, that one utterance alone, y'all, here we see the certainty of God's provision. Mm, Somebody say provision. That's it. We see the certainty, if will, of God's provision. For David reminds us that the Lord, uh, that is uh, the shepherd of our life and our living, the uh, the shepherd of our soul, y'all, he takes care of his sheep. Yes, he takes care of those whom he calls children. He takes care of those whom he loved. Y'all, yes, the shepherd of our soul, he takes his sheep into places where they can feed, focus, and find rest and refreshment. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? 
Yeah, and y'all, that's looking back. When you look back over your life and in your living, y'all, you can't help but declare and decree. If you're really, watch this, honest with yourself, y'all, you can't help but declare and decree. If it had not been for the Lord who were on my side, there were moments and there were times, there were dilemmas, there were situations, there were circumstances where I didn't know if I were going to make it out of I didn't know if I were gonna if I was gonna overcome it. I didn't know if I was gonna get above the water. But then God stepped in and He brought me to a place. Watch this, where I could feed, where I could experience refreshment, where I could experience renewal, where I could, in fact, experience peace. Oh, y'all better believe it, y'all. David is saying in no uncertain terms, when I look back over my life, I have been well tended. Somebody ought to give God some praise there. You have been, I have been, we have been well tended. The one thing that I know, if we'll, Dr. Banks, for certain and for sure, is that over the course of 2023, I have been well tended. Tended. Even when I could not tend to my own needs, there was a God, no, that there is a shepherd of my soul was tending to my needs. And y'all, I ain't just talking spiritual needs. He was tending to my physical need. He was tending to my mental need. He was tending to my uh, psychological need. All oh, the needs of my life and my living. Yes, that shepherd of my soul was tending to my needs. No wonder the apostle Paul could declare and decree with great confidence, my God shall supply all of your need according to the riches. And man, why was Paul able to say it like that with such great confidence? Because Paul had a history with God. Paul had a history with the Lord, a history where God continuously met him at the point of his need to the point and point, point and place where Paul was able to say, in what so of a state I'm in, I've learned how to be all right. I've learned how to be content. Why? Because there's a shepherd of my soul, even in the valley, and I shall not want. No matter what, we see, he says, the provision, the certainty of his provision, but not only do I see the certainty of his provision in that statement alone, but then there's also the promise of his presence. What? Yes, the certainty of his provision, the promise of his presence. Check this thing out and hear what it says. <laughs> I like what David does for us. He says, he makes me. Wait a minute. He leads me. He restores me. He refreshes me. He guides me. Y'all, he says that the Lord, in essence, is with me. Thou art with me. He literally says it. But check this out, y'all. He makes. Uh, he leads. Uh, he refreshes. Uh, he guides. He, he's right there. The promise, if will, or the certainty of his presence, the presence of the shepherd with his sheep is the thematic thrust that sounds loud in this psalm. The Lord is always in close proximity to his sheep. Y'all didn't hear what I said. The Lord is always in close proximity, if will, to his children. He's always near. You, you ain't got to worry about the Lord being far off anywhere. No, no. He is always near. Uh, y'all, I love the fact he's so near in that, y'all, uh, he will be our light 
when we cannot see. Y'all, that's just how near he is. Y'all, y'all, when we can't take another step, y'all, I love the fact that he's so near us that all he has to do is scoop us up and carry us along the way. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. Y'all, he's so near that all you got to do is utter his name. All you got to do is call him up and y'all, he will show up. And I know my granddaddy would say it like this if he were here tonight. He may not come when you think he ought to come, but when he does show up, he always shows up on time. Why? Because he is always near. The certainty of his provision the certainty of his presence but not only that we also see the certainty of his protection because he's near because he's a very present help no because he's present he's a very present help I like that y'all he protects us along the way when he says he makes me y'all he refreshes he guides y'all look at what David says in between that y'all whenever he says um um you're you're right there with me watch what he says He says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, man, we just heard a real true to life testimony that even when I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I've got his presence. His presence, y'all, dictates his protection. Y'all, because he's present with us, we experience his protection and his prevailing power in our life and in our living over our enemies, over our situations, over our circumstances. And you got to realize what the enemy, what David was saying here. He says, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I like the NIV, when I walk through the darkest of valley, when I cannot see my way, when I'm in a dark place, I'm so glad that you're right there with me to protect me. Here it is. I ain't got to find my way through the dark. I ain't got to try to see my way through the dark. It's that when I'm in the dark that I can trust that I've got a, watch this, shepherd in the valley and I shall not want. Y'all ain't tripping. Why? Because even though it's dark in the valley sometime, I got a shepherd that can see in the dark and he is the one that will guide me through my valley situation those dark times. Uh, Think back over your life. Has anybody experienced any darkness in 2023? If God brought you through that dark place in 2023, then you can count on the fact that the same God that brought you through, that brought you over then, is the same God that's going to bring you through and bring you over again. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? I ain't got to see it. All I got to do is believe that God can do anything but fail that God can keep me that he can sustain me that he can protect me even in the valley I shall I mean are y'all get I shall not won't he's got me he keeps me he sustains me so hold on what do we see in that word I shall not won't we have uh, the certainty, if will, of his uh, provision, the certainty of his presence, the certainty of his protection, but it, it doesn't stop there. It gets a little bit better in the sense that, watch this, we also experience from the shepherd, even in the valley, the promise of arrangement. Pastor, you got to help me out with that. Good. This is a good one. If you don't remember anything I've said, I want you to remember this for 2024. The promise of arrangement that God can see far enough ahead to arrange what needs to be arranged uh, to bring you through that dark situation that you may find yourself in. I don't know, have you ever given thought to the fact that God knows how to prearrange things? 
Uh, who did he say this to? Jeremiah, before you were born, I already knew what you were going to be doing. I know I'm paraphrasing, but you get it. Because the Lord says, watch this, I give you the promise, if will, of arrangement. I can arrange some things for you. You can't see it, but I can. So now, when I think about the fact that he is a God of arrangement, y'all, it takes the pressure off of 2024. Now, now I know I want to do all I can and be all I can be. I want to live as he would call me to live and that kind of thing. I don't want to go through, man, the vicissitudes of life and living and all of that. But I know that in this human condition, we cannot avoid the vicissitudes of life. Y'all, we can't afford the downs. Uh, we can't avoid the downs of life. All of that stuff happens into each life. Some rains go fall but what we can trust in the midst of it all is that God has uh, is the God of arrangement that, yes sir that we have a shepherd in the valley and he knows how to arrange some things so that they will absolutely positively work out for our good that God has already determined some things for life and for living no devil in hell can stop it no demon on earth can prevent it. God has already predetermined it. It has already been arranged. What we got to do is keep on walking. Y'all don't believe that God can do it, do you? Wait a minute. Check out the text. Uh, David said, you prepare us the table in front of me, uh, even in the presence of my enemies. My enemies came at me one way, and they had one thing in mind for me. The, but Lord, you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, my enemies would have taken taken me out, but Lord, you prepared a, uh, an environment where I could sit down and I could feast. I could sit down and I could, y'all ain't hearing what I'm telling you. My enemies had one uh, arrangement, but God had a totally different arrangement for me. And y'all, the last time I checked, whenever God arranges anything for you, y'all, they will absolutely prevail over any kind of arrangement. The devil may have any kind of arrangement your enemies may have any kind of arrangement that they may have any kind of y'all ain't hearing what I'm telling you any kind of arrangement the month may have whatever the year may have in store I'm so glad that God says if my hand is on it it's gonna all it, it's gonna all be good it's gonna work out for your good He's a God. I, I never, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's almost as if, watch this, think now. He arranges things. Arranges. So that all you got to do is walk into it. That when I draw close unto him, he draws close unto me. Can I get a witness here? Even when the devil who walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour tries to do what he does. You got to remember what, they, what, what Psalm, the, the counterpart of this Psalm, uh, what is it, 27 says. That when my enemies, even my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled. And they said, God will have you stumbling. Uh, over me. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm telling you. That's how he arranges it so that your enemies will stumble over the very thing that they're trying to use to take you out. Can I get a witness here? Cause why here we have in this psalm, yes, the promise if will of arrangement, but not only do we see arrangement here by the hand of God, but we also see anointing. Prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy uh, to the point that my cup runs over. He says, he anoints my head with oil. Right in between that, overflow and preparing. Arrangement to anointing. I love that. Do y'all know what the anointing means? It indicates God's choosing. It indicates God's choice. It indicates God's choosing. It indicates God's choice that it really doesn't matter what somebody thinks of you. 
as long as God chooses and as long as you're God's choice, he anointed my head with your cup will overflow. Y'all, okay. Uh, I'm trying to say that, yes, arrangement, enemies may have all of that stuff going, for, but if God chooses, it doesn't matter what they do. Can I get a witness here? Dr. Ward, here is what Paul said. If God be for us, who then can stand against us? Y'all, if God's got you like that, y'all, he's more than the world against you. Y'all, that's what anointing is all about. Anointing says, watch this, God, that you're God's choice. And as God's choice, y'all, he says he will allow us to accomplish that which is seemingly impossible. That's the anointing. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Anointing indicates our connection to God and God's connection to us. Anointing is not just for shouting, it's not just for preaching, it's not just for teaching, but it, watch this, is an indication that God has his hand on you. And if God has his hand on you, it's all good. Can I get a witness here? Matter of fact, look at what the text said. Look at the following. Here it is. Watch how this flows. Uh, uh, what an arrangement, anointing, abundance he arranges anoints and you experience abundance no matter what the enemy does that's why watch that that next line my cup overflows my cup runneth over david said man God has chosen me so much so. God's hand is on me so much so. God's hand has been on me so much so. And maybe I didn't realize it before, but God's hand has been on me so much so that watch this, my cup overflows, that, that I am walking in abundance. And that's what you got to know. That's what you got to understand in 2020, that God's hand, when it is on you, when you're God's choice, watch this, he, watch, he anoints. That means that he says, you're connected with me. I'm connected with you to the point that you all to walk in abundance no matter what you're going through in life no matter what life throws your way he says watch this your cup ought to overflow can I get a witness here and, and see this overflowing it ain't one dimensional this overflow it ain't one dimensional this overflow is multi dimensional y'all because God's hand is on you because the anointing is there y'all your life ought to overflow with some peace your life ought to overflow with love your life ought to overflow with joy your life ought to overflow with long suffering your life fruit of the spirit y'all your life ought to be one that overflows into the presence of God and with the power of God the provision of God can I get a pastor how do I experience that by walking in the his anointing are you hearing what I'm telling you and that's it you hear what I'm saying this this David does us a favor he 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 looks back he looks forward with an upward I like this um, perspective point of view declaring and decreeing that it's been God. It's always been him. And it'll always be him. And so look how he closes this thing out. He says, his goodness and his grace will follow me. Yeah. All the days of my life. What? His goodness. His grace, goodness, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my... David looked back at his past and deter made a determination of his future because his grace and mercy had always been present. David came to one profound conclusion. He says, surely... God's goodness and God's grace will follow me all the days of my life that I may dwell in the presence that is in the house of the Lord forever. Man, y'all, I can close the book on that. You ought to, that's, 
that ought to carry us from 23 into 24, through 24, into 25, from as long as we live upon the earth. Surely, his goodness and his grace shall follow me all the days of my life. I've got his goodness. I've got his mercy, his grace. I shall not want. Y'all ain't hear what I'm telling you. If I didn't have anything else of God, if I only had his goodness, and if all I had was his grace, that'll be enough. Y'all, I ain't got to want for anything. As long as I got his goodness, and as long as I got his grace, his mercy, I shall not want. Man, I can't predict y'all 2024. I don't know what it holds, but I do know who holds it. God does. And better than that, better than that, now I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it ain't about God even holding the year, but y'all, it is he who holds me within the year. That, wait a minute, God, I know, holds the year, but y'all better than that. He holds me within the year. That means if all hell starts to break loose within the year, y'all, if things start shaking up, if things start rumbling, if things start to fall apart, y'all, I'm grateful that in the midst of all of that, that I've got a shepherd in the valley, and he is the one that's holding me. So come with me matter my soul's got a shepherd in the valley and I shall not want so look at your neighbor and just tell your neighbor I shall not want wait a minute pick up tell the other I shall not want tell somebody behind you my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say, this, side of the, this side of the room, stand up on your feet for me real quick. We're going to testify together. Tell somebody across the room, say, hey, I shall not want. Come on, say, I shall not want. My soul has a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. Wait a minute, this is call and response. Y'all right here, stand up if we'll over here, look back over that way and say, hey, I shall not want. I shall not want. My soul has a shepherd in the valley and I shall not want. What about y'all in the middle? Stand up on your feet. Man, just yell it out. Just look in which way you want to look at it. Say, we ain't left out. Say, hey, I shall not want. I shall not want. My soul has a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. Now, if you believe that, y'all, and if you've decreed it and declared, come on, put those hands together and give him praise. Oh, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And we, I shall not want. I know it's easy to say it. Top of the year. As we enter in, we just got a couple more hours here before 2024 20, comes. Not here. <laughs> not here. <laughs> I mean, y'all can stay if you need to, but not here. <laughs> I meant here in this year, we got a couple more hours, and 2024 will roll in. And I know it's easy to say, don't let it stress you. Don't let it bother you. But whenever things become stressful, and whenever things become bothersome, whenever I experience disorientation, and I need to reorient my focus. Remember the 23rd Psalm. 
and David's words. I shall not want. Somebody give God praise right there. Lord, thank you so much for your grace, God. Thank you so much for your mercy. Lord, for your keeping power and your sustaining hand. Thank you for this wonderful song that reminds us so very vividly, God, of your provision, presence, protection, that you are God of arrangement. Anointing and abundance. That we are never left in want so long as we lean and depend on you. May the promises of your word be true tonight. It's in the mighty name, oh, the matchless name of Jesus that we praise you and thank you. Let everybody say, amen, amen, amen. Now, listen, there may be somebody here. I don't want to assume that everybody is saved and nobody needs restoration, that nobody needs to be reoriented. But I do declare if that's you, you ain't got to go out the same way you came in here. You ain't even got to end the year that way. You could do something about it right now. If you need to come to, to the Lord, that shepherd in the valley, if you need to come to him, I don't want you to worry about nobody else. I want you to get up from where you are and make your way this way for salvation, for restoration. Maybe it's personal prayer. What? What, whatever the case may be just stand on your feet and come on this way don't, don't worry about nothing else I told you the night was about uh, praising him the night was about prayer and connecting with him and of course spending time in his word preaching but if you came in here carrying this and you feel disoriented in any way even those who are online with us you ain't got to disconnect and you, you ain't got to disconnect that way you ain't got to leave disoriented we serve a, a God a shepherd in the valley who knows how to touch and reorient your life and your living. If that's you, right where you are. And I just want you to pray this quick prayer with me. Anybody else who needs to move, now's the time to do it in the building. Don't, don't wait. If you're, you're here and you need to come, come on. Hallelujah. Anybody else who needs to do it, come on. Those online, stretch your hands toward heaven. Lord, thank you that you are our shepherd in the valley I shall not want thank you God for keeping thank you God for sustaining thank you for doing it Lord I return to you now give you my life I recommit my living may you anoint me to the point that my cup overflows I pray for my family in the name of Jesus that you would bless that you would keep that you would sustain in the name of Jesus I ask it all amen
Amen. Amen.